What's up again? It's Stanky here, and I'm just making another video about the group stage of the Manila Major. Um, I watched a bunch of it over the weekend because I had nothing to do, and I didn't watch all the games intently, but I just sort of noted, noted down parts that I thought were worth talking about um, or looking at again in a video. So I've gone and sort of compiled compiled some highlights from the um, the groups and there's just some cool little plays in there and there's some sort of team fight analysis and some late game strategy stuff and just some cool little plays so have a have a look hope you enjoy it so this is from game one of navi vs dc and they had a pretty cool series if you were looking for one to watch i'd probably recommend this one um <clears throat> They, everyone was talking about this big play where Dendi blinked in and stunned two of the heroes that set up for them to take Rax. So that what they didn't talk about is that he actually spiked Carapace them first. He's actually used it in Viz rune, but they know about that because they've dewatered two of their sentries on the way in. So they know Dendi's sitting here in Viz. And spike Carapace, if you're not sure how it works, it stops you taking damage and it actually still lets you hit, use blink and it stuns them. So if, he, if we have throws out his orb and he pops Carapace and walks into it, he doesn't. Dendi doesn't take the damage and Dendi can still blink and it stuns Weha. So he actually does that. Um, if we watch here, probably watch it in slow-mo once he throws it. <laughs> so he throws out his orb, Dendi pops Carapace and runs at it. And he gets stunned. And then he blinks into the Sunray, so it stuns him as well. And then he double stuns both of them with Carapace. All of that was on purpose, um, but it didn't seem to get noticed at the time. But these are the kind of... Uh, plays that win you games. Um, they're already down a hero and if you can jump in here and get a stun on two, they've only got two players left on their team to, to react to you, so um, it's basically going to guarantee you a Rax and probably the game. <clears throat> um, also it's worth noting <laughs> that you, you could phase shift um, if you timed it well. Or if you're going to throw the orb into a Nyx, you probably need to blink out afterwards or you need to phase shift dodge the um, spike carapace. So this is just a cheeky little play by Weeha that I thought was pretty cool. Um, I saw it came up on the uh, DC's YouTube page as well if you wanted to check that out. Um, he goes for a kill on the bear here that's split pushing by itself with Ags um, and he can't chase it any further because it's getting too close to the T2 tower where they could TP to kill him. And he goes for a sun strike on him because he thinks he figures he's going to call the bear to himself after the cooldown. And he does, and it happens to walk it straight into the sun strike. Fucking sick. So, this is in the second game, Navi DC. Um, this is quite far into the game, but this is one of the major team fights that happens. Uh, has a big swing in the game. So, they're in, there's in here walking in, and Resolution Chronos, but kind of whiffs it. He's hoping to try to get to Era and the other team in the Chrono, and then he BKBs straight away, so. That, <clears throat> for whatever reason, I honestly don't know why, I guess um, it was just instinct, but he doesn't get to Yara, and then if you look at what DC is doing, they're just completely lost, because they don't have a good, they want to still target the Yara, but he's not in the chrono, and these guys are too far away to target, so Weeha hasn't really used a spell on anybody, and the other guys are kind of half assed trying to kill the Yara while his um, beer is ragging on them. TND this whole time was top, and was looking for a good spot to TP into. He TPs here on the bear, um, and if we watch what he does, he just completely wrecks this fight. He pops Shivas straight away, which is always really cool because you can blink and then it will still shift afterwards, but will be at a bigger range. He rockets the four heroes because he's got Ags, gets um, Laser off, which tries to delay the amount of time to kill Egg because they can't actually attack the Egg because they got mischance. Blinks up here, lasers both of them as the rockets are about to hit them and kills them as well. And then he rearms again and blinks away from the... Weeha's attack over near a general <coughs> to the safety of the Zip Necro units and Boars, pops Shivers and Rockets, and gets the kill on Saska here. And Moot manages to get away because General used his blink to ch chase him rather than rather than the Marana. So this is from a bit later in game two. So it's just a part of the a fight that doesn't go terribly well for Navi. General blinks forward here, trying to get a roar off. Dindy. Get, but he gets kind of fogged, I think, so he doesn't actually get to cast it, and now he's out of position, he gets chronoed. Um, <clears throat> so Neko's trying to choose between healing the bear and healing, healing general. Um, Dindy's kind of trying to stay off to the side of this fight to keep himself safe, which is quickly going very fast, very sour for his team. Um, so they're all getting a bit wrecked here. He decides to just chuck a bunch of marches down and get the hell out um, and re mana up. Um, to come back in again. The rest of his team dies except for Dindy. 
So except for the ARR. <clears throat> and then it's having like the presence of mind here that the ARR like resummons his bear against like 2v4. And Dendi still has the balls to TP back into this because they're all quite low, right? So he blinks himself to a safe position, rockets, he lasers the images, which is a bit annoying, but um, he gets rocket off on Mu, blinks forward, and then he ca he's out of range, but he still casts Shiva first, which is what I was talking about before. So now he's got a big range on Shiva, and then when he blinks in, well, he rockets again, but when he blinks in, the Shiva hits him, and then he slows him down, and he can damp what damages him and let some laser him as well, and then he just gets out. So this is the end of a really long 86 minute game between Navi vs DC and I just kind of wanted to go over it because I always find these super late games really interesting um, once they actually end up ending I guess. Um, but I'm a bit of a nerd like that. I like watching the map movements and stuff of the, hero of the teams and their decisions in these sort of late game scenarios. It's like a real chess match, you know. It's not always about who's got more farm and who's got more... Uh, more items. It's about buyback statuses, map movements, split pushing, uh, decision making. It's it's really, really uh, like a big chess match, you know. So DC have this ward up here. They throw out arrows for vision. They're trying to scout out stuff, but this ward turns out to be really crucial because it allows the resolution to go for a big chrono here. Again, he's always trying to get DR, and they're trying to kill him because without DR, they can't push. Right? Like if they kill him. Um, or like the bear twice, I guess, then they can't, they can't push at all. General blinks past here instead of roaring resolution and roars misery, who does most of their physical damage. And then he um, uses Necro Book, refreshes, roars Moo. They've got the Phoenix sort of as a zoning ulti here. Dendi's just throwing out rockets and dagging people, trying to shoot his and hex. He blinks a bit too aggressively here, I think, in the middle of all these creeps and units. He gets roared, but then. So not roared, he gets. Uh, ulted by Winter Wyvern, but they also, it also kind of protects him because he can't take any damage when he's Winter Wyvern ulted. And Weha essentially wastes his um, his uh, meatball on him. The general managed to run into the trees here and blink up into the base, and he's actually popped Necro Books and he's going for this Rax here, trying to push it out. And they actually notice and they pop Glyph rather than dealing with him because they need to deal with this fight. Right? They've hit a Chrono down here, so it's kind of this weird, <laughs> weird balance of where do you fight. <clears throat> Dendi dies, loses, uh, loses Aegis, they're trying to chase General out again, but he blinks down, I think. No, he just dies. Um, they get the roar off here on resolution so that they can just run forward and go hard for the racks. Uh, Savage Roar is quite useful in these late game scenarios, and they get the racks here, but then a lot of them die. Um, Dendi almost lives here. I don't actually know what he dies to. Is it a Mjolna proc? Or is it the wagon? We'll see. He gets the hex off on him again. On hex off on him again. Oh, it's the laser um, from Mu. Like way the hell at home. Who's got Mjolna on their team? I don't know. Oh, Marana. Yeah, okay. So that new status effect makes it all red and weird. Anyway, they kill off a bunch of their team here, but if you look at buyback statuses, they all have buyback. Buyback, buyback, buyback. Saneko doesn't, but he's still alive. And Witch Doctor doesn't, but he's still alive. So the two without buyback uh, made sure that they stayed at the back and didn't die. Or by luck managed to not die. Um, who just bought back? Beastmaster bought back early. These two have actually got it, but are just trying to hold it, or at least holding it as like a surprise. Um, he d if he doesn't have his bear summon up, there's not actually a huge point in him buying back anyway, but he does regardless. He buys Refresher, that's right. He buys Refresher and summons his spirit bear, um, which is pretty cool. I think he holds on to it rather than... Yeah, he doesn't have anything else to hold in that spot anyway. Is he getting rid of... What's he doing? Oh, he gave his beer, Travs. That's sick. And he went to, to pit it to this hawk here. 
This was a huge play. I remember this now. And he runs the Baron to backlane it, so he kills the creeps, which essentially means if they kill this wave, now DC can't push, because the other wave is here and here, right? So they're going to be fighting against backdoor, backdoor protection if they blow this wave up. And then he timed it to kill it at 30 seconds when the next wave spawns. And then he just charges his bear into the throne here, so that, oh, and he kills the current sick place. And that's a really cool play. So that was obviously planned to fly the hawk up here and to give Travs to the bear and TP it up. So then they send Weeha back to deal with it. And now they're back to square one again. So not like you don't always have to actually engage the team <laughs> to to win fights or to defend your base. Sometimes there's smart little plays like that you can do which save you from having to roll the dice of having a team fight. Um, so now they're trying to push the lane back out again. But in the meantime, top's pushing pretty hard, bottom's putting, pushing pretty hard. They're in a much worse position now, lane-wise, than they were before. So before, the lanes were like back here and here. Now they, they're really indecisive, sort of jumping around, not knowing whether to just take racks or go for bottom or what they want to do. They start just forcing a throne here, because they figure they're uh, this is like last-ditch effort type stuff in their mind. They're fighting against Megas. Void goes for sort of a desperation chrono and just throws it on Seneco by himself, which is a huge waste. I think maybe he didn't know where the other heroes were, and he was trying to sort of zone them out from coming to engage on them. And they get a little bit wrecked here. <clears throat> just fighting under T4 towers inside their base. Bad positioning, bad usage of spells. And um, Void's using a refresher but then doesn't have mana for chrono which he actually did right before he jumped but like it's a sort of a problem with this build on a carry void going for a refresher you don't actually have the mana pool to do everything you want to do because this is 375 and chrono's a 300 so you actually need more than 900 mana in 975 which means you can't even use your other spells at all and just 75 mana short they talked about that a lot in the um, commentary they managed to get the kill here on the phoenix <coughs> and they're fully four but they just tp into the base here and go for the throne we has uh, boots are down his boots are down his boots are down so i think i didn't actually notice that but they must have seen them travs two here or something after buybacks uh and they know that they just can't defend if they tp through here resolution comes and tries but they just savage roar him, roar him away and go for the push and win Sick, sick plays from some veteran Dota players. I learn a lot from these guys. So I thought I'd just chuck this in here for your sort of daily reminder of how broken Timbersaur is. Look at this shit. He's got a uh, max reactive armor and a poor man's shield. And he just, he just doesn't care. He's just getting stunned. He's getting poison touched. He's getting attacked by towers. Being heal bombed. He's just... Just, just get attacked by tower some more, get stunned under the tower, getting attacked by a full, almost a full wave of creeps. He doesn't care. He's got 32 armor and 33 health regen. This this guy, he got killed what, like earlier this game, he actually died twice, but look at this. This is an offlaner who's died twice at 9 minutes, and he can do this. It's ridiculous. To kill him, they had to rotate 4 heroes bottom. And then he just does this, he just dives, taking a full wave of creeps, add a nyx, add a tower. He's regening during this process. He's gaining health. I don't know, it's just... This buff was just way over the top, I think. This is a pretty cool patient play by Wings. So they smoke and they don't find a kill, but they drop a ward in the lane here, and then they see that their wave's pushing in, so they just run and hide. And instead of anyone showing in lane, they hide in the area close <laughs> but in the bushes out of vision wait for Moo to show up and then kill him. very good patience and uh good setup i like it and then uh i think we have might not have been paying attention to what just happened but um here we go for round two and boom <laughs> He's dead, but he has his team behind him, which they didn't see, I don't think, at the time. And they come reinitiate here. And we'll see how that turns out. They pick up a kill, they have a doom off on the invoker, and they're gonna chase him down, but I think that's actually gonna end before he dies. So they can turn and kill doom here, but they don't quite. He gets blown up by Lion, and ends up actually being a pretty good fight for DC in the end. 
So we actually see this little play a fair bit throughout this game, and it's actually really good, right? Because it's the Nyx's problem is that when he vendettas, he hits, and then his impale isn't targetable anymore, so he can often miss it. But if you fissure him, then he gets a free attack and stun, and it's undodgeable. Because if the lion was quick, he could hex him, and then the Nyx could end up dying. But drafting an Earthshaker uh, support with a Nyx is, seems to be quite a good draft decision. So this is actually a pretty sick couple of little fights here in the end of this DC Wings game. Um, they go for the resolution here, he's gone to the tower, doesn't have an Aegis. They do this sort of combo, but Invoker does a really weird refresher combo. He just does like Sunstrike, EMP, Deafening Blast, and then refreshes for another Deafening Blast. And the second one actually pushes him down the hill. Resolution actually BKBs here, which I thought was crazy, but he like... Because that second uh, Deafening Blast pushed him down the hill, he's actually kind of out of reach of their physical attacks. And uh, they ma he manages to get back and just dodges the Sun Strike. They're trying to disengage, so he doesn't dodge it, he just he misses it. But he gets back and Misery's dropped the cheese for um, Resolution to come eat. So they actually managed to pull out of the fight here. And these guys are sort of holding them off and Lycan's ulti is now down so they've lost Lycan ulti, they've lost Echo, they've lost Weave which will be back up in shortly but on, and Refresh is down for Invoker as well and some of his spells will be still on cooldown as well so that's huge that they managed to bait all that out on Resolution they were going all in to try to kill him and they didn't so that's basically a game lost for them really because now they just need a fight here with um, all the other team's spells down and they win, so Doom recognizes that, he just BKB blinks in, Weeha I think just blinks in as well, um, and Moo gets in there as well, he's got blinks, so they just blink over this fissure, get in amongst it, because they know that they've got nothing up, and they just BKB, go hard, wipe out the whole team, and that's game. Um, so a couple of little misplays there, along with some good plays, and led to the win here for for DC. Good team fight. This is from Mineski vs EG, game one. I thought this was pretty funny. Um, so the way that Echo Saber works is that the double attack applies 100% movement and attack speed slow. So when he attacks him here the second time with Echo Saber, it's sort of weird, right? So like he did the first attack on the creep, but he didn't. it died before he casted the second attack. So even though Echo Saber is off cooldown, it it's still ready to apply the second fast attack, which it does here, it does a little quick attack, and it applies the 100% movement slow, and Ember tries to Remnant out, and his Remnant moves at his movement speed, which is zero, so it just didn't go anywhere, and he jumped out to nothing and then died. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. So this is a pretty cool fight here between EG and Mineski, still game one. The Dragon Knight ultis here starts to try to zone the bat, Fireflies and jumps in on the Samael and ulties him, which purges him, and the Dragon Tails the Abaddon at the same time so that he can't cancel it because his Aphotic Shield cancels bad ulti if he casts it on um, on Samael there. Aoi jumps in BKBs and actually stuns the bat and kills him because he's barely moving. And then it gets a little bit messy. Witch Doctor ulties, PPD cancels that with his ult, which isn't the best use of ulti, but they don't actually have a lot of stuns to stop his ultimate, so I think it's still worth it. Um, but then they all kind of position themselves over him here. At least Samael gets some free stacks off of Static Link while he's ultied. Um, but Aoi's getting a little bit deep here under the T4s and sort of getting kited a bit too much, and they get a bit overcommitted, and they start taking way too much damage. They back off. They get a good kill, but then they, seem, they don't really have enough health to sustain the Slide of Fists from Ember Spirit while they take the racks here, so they back up and try to heal, but they decide it's best actually just to get out. So now they're back for round two and trying to make the most out of this Aegis that they've got here on Samael. Um, there's actually some really good team fighting that happens by both teams in this fight yet again. So it's quite cool to watch when both teams really understand what they need to do in the fights. Um, Batrider goes, they go for the same play, play here. Batrider goes for the for Samael. I think he's trying to drag him back under the towers and he stuns Bulba so he can't cancel it, but PPD actually gets in close enough to ulti the Dragon Knight, which therefore will stop Batrider moving. They don't start attacking straight away, but they sort of set themselves up and that they get ready so that when Winter's Curse is about to end, Aoi stuns them both right on time. They don't take the damage from the stun, but it means they are stunned when it ends. 
and then Witch Doctor gets a full duration ulti up there because they're out of stuff to cancel his ulti and um, Slider gets a pretty good reinitiation here on the other team, hits a what, three man stun, Owie blinks it and kills the Witch Doctor. Um, Samael's still on a million damage but um, they can't really chase them any further here so they back up and take the Rexes. So this is another really cool series if you're looking for another one to watch if you don't watch all the games. Um, Alliance vs Liquid, they had a really cool three game series, just spoiled it for you. But um, the, everyone talks about Liquid's early game and how much pressure they put on and all this sort of stuff, but they, their team play is actually really sick. It started a bit before I wanted it to. Um, but this is a Roche fight and Alliance are trying to sneak it. Um, well not sneak it, but they're trying to take it and position themselves on this right hand side and De uh, Liquid are trying to wait um, for the Roche to get low enough so that they can fight as it's about to die because you want the Roche, them to be having to decide between killing Roche and killing your team so you can start the fight while they're at that point. If you do it too early they'll just leave Roche on alone and come kill you. So They're trying to get vision here all the time and they've got it and he goes for the kick which stuns both of them right as Roche dies. So Radiant actually gets the kill. Matumba Man ulties in. He actually hasn't dropped his TP scroll yet which I would have done before I ulted him probably but he drops his TP scroll and then grabs the Aegis. Um, they've egged here. Uh, Death Prophet was silenced so he's yules himself to break that but he does it a little bit I guess it's a good timing, but I thought he was going to be coming down as the egg broke. But he starts to run away, and Matumba Man, uh, sorry, Mind Control actually four stuffs him up here. So that's that's planned, right? Like he's calling for that, running towards the cliff and calling for that play. They're going to obviously they're going for him here. They're not going to go for the spec. So he pops ulti, gets the silence off here on Bulldog, which is really important. So he can't de amplify damage him or stun him, and he starts using his E on a bunch of people to keep himself alive and this team comes in here to support so they throw the kick over top they've used everything on him right so they've committed all their spells to this guy and Bulldog can't do anything because he's silenced forever with this stupidly long duration six second silence the fight's over before Bulldog can do anything if he didn't get that silence off there he might have died um, and then they vac wall earth, earth spirit stun roll spec break them everything so really good fight really good patience by them and good positioning there was this huge battle before it which was really interesting as well to like for vision like trying to get your wards up around this roche fight like smoking around and placing wards before the fight happens because vision around these roshan fights is often what wins or loses it but yeah huge fight which basically won them the game this gets them the roshan and uh, well denies the Aegis to to alliance and gets a huge team fight spike for for liquid so if you watch uh, watch my videos you would have seen my recent like fear video on uh, Earth Spirit hopefully but I was just watching some of these plays here and I thought I'd comment on them. He kicks Kuroki away here so he can TP out which is pretty cool, blinks out, runs away. Fata starts TPing and I had to watch this so many times to like figure out what was going on because I'm an idiot but well, I, I thought that Jurax pulled him out here but he doesn't have Axe so he can't anymore. You used to be able to pull people with your pull. Um, your own team but because he flies out here but he gets lifted by Rubik and then four stuff by Darkseer and he just did a stun like a pulled his rock to silence them at the same time by coincidence so that confused me a lot um Jurex blinks out here and then kind of goes back which is just a bit of a waste of his blink but he Kirksey goes back in here to help Matumbo and he tells him to run over here he's pinging and he kicks him and rolls um and drops his little spirit so he rolls out miles away and it's just a quite a cool disengage so this is a pretty cool clip from Alliance vs Fnatic. Um, the mid one here finds Ake and he goes for a glimpse on him. Uh, but mid one times it so that when he's about to get glimpsed out he slide of fist dodges it. And then gets the kill. Little thing, I think he does it a couple times in this game. But um, if you didn't know that you could do that you can. So.